Hello, beautiful friends of Bookish Fam. My name is Brittany. This is Recipes and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me for another Bookmas video. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, I always appreciate your support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are going to talk about some of my 2024 anticipated releases. Now, before I jump into the video, I do have to apologize if there is more background noise than usual in this video and possibly some of the other videos that are going to come out shortly after this one. I'm currently off from work today. My husband is at work. He is gone. And so because of that, just in case something happens and my animals need me for whatever reason, I wanted to go ahead and leave the door open. But of course, that means that my animals can come in and out as they want to. And so there might be a little additional noise. Archie is already in here doing the most with all of the books that are surrounding me after a big unhaul that I've done. So again, I do apologize if there is excess background noise in in these videos. Now, like I just said in the introduction today, we are here to talk about some of my anticipated releases that are coming out within the first half of 2024. For the sake of this video, the releases I'm talking about are only going to be covered from January to June. That's primarily because a lot of the releases that are coming out later in the year have not really been announced. I was only able to find a couple here and there that were released like after the June, July timeframe. And for the most part, I wasn't really interested in any of them. So we're only going to cover the first half of the year in this video and possibly at some point early next year, like maybe after the first quarter, I will try to do a follow what video with my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. Now, there are actually quite a lot of them. And so in the interest of brevity, I don't think I'm going to be reading the full synopsis of every single one of these. So I'm just going to do what I can to give us a solid idea of what the book is about before moving on. Obviously, these dates are subject to change. The dates that I'm mentioning are what they are as of the date that I'm filming this video. So hopefully these don't change, but they could definitely. All right, and we are going to start with January. The very first Tuesday in January is the second. And I only have one release that I want to talk to you about for this date. It is a book called Midnight by Amy McCullough. She wrote a book called Breathless that I actually really enjoyed. It was a thriller set on a mountaintop. Mountain climbers were going up, people started to die. It was kind of like a locked room mystery set on the side of a mountain, if you will. And I actually really enjoyed the story overall. And I really enjoyed all that I learned about mountain climbing in general. And so I would be very interested to read more from this author. And so that's why this book is currently on my radar. There is a pretty short synopsis here, so I'll go ahead and read it. Olivia Campbell has always dreamed of spending a sunlit night on the fridge Antarctic continent. But as an actuary who assesses risk for a living, she never imagined she would have the chance. So when her career takes an unexpected detour and her boyfriend, a high-powered art dealer with a taste for the finer things in life, decides to stage an ostentatious career-making auction on a luxury liner to Antarctica, Olivia is thrilled. That is, until things start to feel a bit strange. In addition to the scores of wealthy patrons and potential buyers, they'll also be traveling alongside a small group of beleaguered employees of Pioneer Adventures, the company responsible for managing the ship and their charismatic, divisive CEO. When the first bodies are discovered, it's easy enough for Olivia to write it off as a terrible accident. But as the situation heats up and the temperature continues to plummet, she begins to wonder whether she might have booked a one-way ticket to her own demise. So this is definitely giving me wintry isolation thrillers. And y'all know how much I love those. I did a video completely dedicated to those. And who knows, this could potentially end up on the next video that I make regarding those. So I am very excited about this one. And again, this comes out on the second. It looks like I don't have any releases to talk about for the ninth. So moving right on into the 16th, one I'm very highly anticipating is the next release from Stacey Willingham called Only If You're Lucky. It seems like all of her books tend to be released in January and I'm actually very surprised to see that Book of the Month did not feature her book in December because I believe her last two books were both featured in December for her January release. But regardless, I am very excited to see this one come up in January. It says Only If You're Lucky is a tantalizing thriller about the nature of friendship and belonging about loyalty, envy, and betrayal. Another gripping novel from an author quickly becoming the gold standard in psychological suspense. Can't argue there. I've really enjoyed her other two previous releases and I'm I'm excited to get into this one, although I'm a little bit nervous. So without reading this full synopsis of it, it sounds like there could be maybe some toxic female relationships in here, which I'm not a fan of. Like I'm not a fan of thrillers of like the crazy woman or the woman who wants to steal another woman's husband or things like that. The unhinged woman basically. But I'm really hoping that that's not going to be the case in here. And I trust Stacey Millingham at this point. So I'm very much looking forward to getting into this one. The last one I'm going to talk to you about for the 16th is The Fury by Alex Michaelides. Now, I don't know if anticipated is the right word to use for this one. I have not even decided if I'm going to pick this up. I read The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides and I remember enjoying it. And then I read The Maidens and I didn't enjoy it at all. And I'm still not sure about this one. The synopsis again is pretty short, so I'll go ahead and read it. It says, this is a tale of murder, or maybe that's not quite true. At its heart, it's a love story, isn't it? Lana Farrar is a reclusive ex-movie star and one of the most famous women in the world. Every year, she invites her closest friends to escape the English weather and spend Easter on her idyllic private Greek island. I tell you this because you may think you know this story. You probably read about it at the time. It caused a real stir in 
the tabloids. It had all the necessary ingredients for a press sensation, a celebrity, a private island cut off by the wind, and a murder. Okay, so we have another isolation thriller here. We found ourselves trapped there overnight. Our old friendships concealed hatred and a desire for revenge. What followed was a game of cat and mouse, a battle of wits full of twists and turns, building to an unforgettable climax. The night ended in violence and death, as one of us was found murdered. But who am I? My name is Elliot Chase, and I'm going to tell you a story unlike any you've ever heard. So I'm wondering if the way that the synopsis is being told is also going to be the way that the story is told, maybe in second person, which is very, very intriguing. That doesn't always work for me, but it is a very unique way of telling a story. So just based on the premise, we have a locked room kind of isolation thriller where people are coming together and they have vendettas against one another. I am a little bit intrigued, so I could potentially be convinced to pick this one up. Moving on into the 23rd, I have one that I'm going to discuss. It is another one that I'm highly anticipating, and it is actually one that I put in my December book of the month box, and that is the newest release from K. Alice Marshall called No One Can Know. I really enjoyed What Lies in the Woods, and it really made me want to go ahead and pick up another book by her. This says it's a novel about three sisters, two murders, and too many secrets to count. I don't need to know anything more than that. I'm okay going into this one a little bit blind. Like I said, I really enjoyed What Lies in the Woods, and I'm excited to go ahead and give this one a shot. And of course, the final January release that I'm going to talk to you about is one that I know not only me, but a lot of people are very highly anticipating, and that is the third book in the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass called House of Flame and Shadow. I obviously can't really tell you too much about this story because it is the third in a series, but this is a high epic adult fantasy by Sarah J. Mass. It follows Hunt Athelar and Bryce Quinlan, and I absolutely loved the first two books. The second book ended on a massive cliffhanger. It basically blew my mind and gave me chills. I was not expecting it. This is definitely, definitely a high priority for after I finish the other two books that I need to read to complete her other series. All right, moving on into February, starting with the six, we have another book that I'm extremely excited about. It is Kristen Hanna's newest release. It is called The Women. Y'all know that I am such a fangirl for Kristen Hanna. I just think she writes the most wonderfully hard-hitting, beautifully written, character-driven stories that just break your heart. I don't think that there has been a Kristen Hanna book that I haven't really loved or enjoyed to some capacity. I'm just going to read the brief blurb here that Amazon has. It says, The Missing, The Forgotten, The Brave, The Women. From master storyteller Kristen Hanna comes a story of a turbulent, transformative era in America, the 1960s. The Women is that rarest of novels, at once an intimate portrait of a woman coming of age in a dangerous time, and an epic tale of a nation divided by war and broken by politics, of a generation both fueled by dreams and lost on the battlefield. Women can be heroes too. So it sounds like this might be taking place on the heels of or during the Vietnam War, and I'm interested how all of this is going to come together. But again, it doesn't matter. Kristen Hanna could write a grocery list or a textbook, and I would probably read it just because I love her and I'm such a fan of her writing. So this is another top priority in 2023 if I can get to it. We also have a new release from Frieda McFadden coming out on the 6th, and it is a book called The Teacher. This says, lesson number one, trust no one. Eve has a good life. She gets up each day, gets a kiss from her husband, Nate, and heads off to teach math at the local high school. All is as it should be, except last year, Kaysom High was rocked by a scandal with one student, Addie, at its center. And this year, Eve is dismayed to find the girl in her class. Addie can't be trusted. She lies, she hurts people, she destroys lives. At least that's what everyone says. But nobody knows the real Addie. Nobody knows the secret that could destroy her. And Addie will do anything to keep it quiet. From the New York Times bestselling author, Frieda McFadden, comes a story of twisting secrets and long-awaited revenge. So this is an interesting dynamic. It sounds like it's going to be a high school teacher and a high school student. Not really sure how all of that's going to work and weave together. I'm a little bit wary about having a younger perspective in this, but we are going to see. I'm starting to trust Frieda McFadden implicitly after reading The Housemaid and Never Lie, and I certainly have The Housemaid's Secret as a top priority in 2024 as well. So this one is certainly on my radar and on my TBR. Also coming out on the 6th is a new release from Allie Hazelwood, but it is not a release that you would expect because it is not a contemporary romance. It is actually her first foray into fantasy romance, and it is a book called called Bride. I will go ahead and read the synopsis of this one so we can get an idea of what exactly this is going to be about. It says, Misery Lark, the only daughter of the most powerful vampire councilman of the Southwest, is an outcast. Again, her days of living in anonymity among the humans are over. She's been called upon to uphold a historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the wares, and she sees little choice but to surrender herself in the exchange. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable, and their alpha, Lo Morland, is no exception. He rules his pack with absolute authority, but not without justice. And unlike the vampire council, not without feeling. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every movement that he doesn't trust her. If only he knew how right he was. Because Misery has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience, reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliance, and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about, and she is willing to do whatever it takes to get back what's hers, even if it means a life alone in were territory, alone with the wolf. So it sounds like this is going to be an arranged marriage between a vampire and a werewolf, and obviously it's probably going to turn into an actual romance, but it sounds like there are some underlying things going on here, and I'm here for it. I am definitely willing to give this a try to see what Allie Hazelwood can do. So I am definitely excited, but 
been a little nervous to get to this one. All right, looks like I don't have anything for the 13th. So moving on into the 20th, I have one release to talk to you about, and it's actually the newest release from AJ Finn. He wrote The Woman in the Window years ago. He hasn't written anything since to my knowledge. So this is an anticipated sophomore novel, and I am intrigued. I am interested to see what he could do. I remember enjoying The Woman in the Window, and so let's go ahead and see what this one is about. It says, I'll be dead in three months. Come tell my story. So writes Sebastian Trapp, reclusive mystery novelist, to his longtime correspondent Nikki Hunter, an expert in detective fiction. With mere months to live, Trapp invites Nikki to his spectacular San Francisco mansion to help draft his life story. Living alongside his beautiful second wife Diana, his wayward nephew Freddie, and his protective daughter Madeline, soon Nikki finds herself caught in an irresistible case of real life detective fever. 20 years earlier, on New Year's Eve 1999, Sebastian's first wife and teenage son vanished from different locations, never to be seen again. Did the perfect crime writer commit the perfect crime? And why has he emerged from seclusion two decades later to allow a stranger to dig into his past. That definitely sounds really interesting. I am certainly intrigued to find out what is going to happen in this story. This is definitely one that has been added to my TBR for 2024. All right, and that actually does it for February. Moving on into March, I only have three that I'm going to mention here today, two of which come out on March 5th. The first being Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice by El Cosmano. This is the fourth book in her Finley Donovan series, which you all know that I've been reading and really enjoying recently. Some people would classify these books as cozy mysteries, but I actually don't think that fits because I do believe that these books are a little bit more serious, more complex, more in-depth than a standard cozy mystery. So I would just kind of maybe classify this as a lighter mystery overall. It's not too terribly gruesome or anything like that, but there is definitely a depth to it that you might not necessarily be expecting. The characters in these stories are absolutely wonderful. I've had a great time with the first three and I'm certainly excited to read this and get caught up in the series. I don't know if there are going to be any more released in the series. I certainly hope so, but I will be reading however many she puts out because I just love them so much. Also coming out on March 5th is Simone St. James's new release called Murder Road. I very much enjoy Simone St. James. I've read three of her past releases. I have the rest of her backlist on my TBR and I'm certainly looking forward to getting to this newest release. Her books typically are speculative in nature. They do tend to feature ghosts quite heavily. I'm sure that this one is going to be no different. It says July 1995. April and Eddie have taken a wrong turn. They're looking for the small resort town where they plan to spend their honeymoon. When they spot what appears to be a lone hitchhiker along the deserted road, they stop to help. But not long after the hitchhiker gets into their car, they see the blood seeping from her jacket and a truck barreling down Atticus line after them. When the hitchhiker dies at the local hospital, April and Eddie find themselves in the crosshairs of the Cold Lake Falls police. Unexplained murders have been happening along Atticus line for years, and the cops finally have two witnesses who easily become their only suspects. As April and Eddie start to dig into the history of the town and that horrible stretch of road to clear their names, they soon learn that there is something supernatural at work, something that could not only tear the town and its dark secrets apart, but take April and Eddie down with it all. I'm here for it. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. I hope that this becomes a new favorite Simone St. James, and again, this is one that I'm highly anticipating in 2024. And then the very last one that I want to talk to you about is actually only coming out on March 12th, so I don't have anything for the latter half of the month, but it is Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. This is the second book in his Empire of the Vampire series. I read the first book, I think it was in 2021 that I read it. It is a thick boy. It is definitely something heavy to dive into. I really very much enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to seeing Gabriel continue his adventures with the Holy Grail in book two. I'm obviously not going to say anything more about it just because it is a sequel to the series, but if you have not read Empire of the Vampire, I would highly recommend if you are looking for a great, serious, darker vampire story. All right, moving on into April, we have the newest release from Abby Jimenez, which I am so excited for. It is called Just for the Summer. Y'all know that I discovered Abby Jimenez this year, and I really, really love her. She is now an auto by author, and this sounds like it's going to have a fake dating trope between two people who consider themselves cursed, and that every single time they date somebody and break up with them, that person goes on to find their soulmate. And so when they find each other, I think potentially on a dating app, they believe that if they fake date each other and then break up, it'll cancel out their curses, and then it's going to go from there. I think obviously they're going to fall in love with each other. So I guess technically that means that they are breaking their own curse. And Abby Jimenez always knows how to include a harder hitting element. There's a lot of emotion in her stories and I can always feel it very intensely when I'm reading them, which makes her such a standout romance author for me. So I'm very, very excited to get to this one. Also in the second, we have The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This is going to be her newest release. Holly Jackson wrote the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy, which I absolutely adored. I'm tentatively putting this on my radar for 2024. And I say that because she writes YA and I've mentioned this multiple times, but I'm just not reading YA anymore. And even authors that I've loved in the past, their new releases typically don't entice me because they are YA. It's almost like I'm not even willing to give them a chance anymore. But I do believe that Holly Jackson writes pretty solid YA thrillers. So let's see what this one says. 18 year old Belle has lived her whole life in the shadow of her mom's mysterious disappearance. 16 years ago, Rachel Price vanished and young Belle was the only witness, but she has no memory of it. Rachel is gone, long presumed dead, and Belle wishes everyone would just move on. But the case is dragged up from the past when the Price family agrees to a true crime documentary. Belle can't wait for filming to end, for life to go back to normal, and then the impossible happens. Rachel Price re 
reappears and life will never be normal again. Rachel has an unbelievable story about what happened to her. Unbelievable because Belle isn't sure it's real. If Rachel is lying, then where has she been all this time? Could she be dangerous? With the camera still rolling, Belle must uncover the truth about her mother and find out why Rachel Price really came back from the dead. Okay, I'm sold. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. I love that there's going to be a true crime documentary aspect to it rather than a podcast aspect to it. I love the whole premise of this. I'm super interested to know whether what happened to Rachel Price is actually true or if this is going to be more like a Sherry Papini case, if you know, you know. So yeah, this is going to go on to my wish list, my TBR, all the things. All right, moving on into the 9th of April, we have The Hemlock Queen by Hannah Witten. I put this on my list because I read The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten earlier this year and I enjoyed it for the most part. It wasn't anything crazy spectacular, but I might be willing to read the sequel. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to continue in the series, but it is coming out next year, so I may give it a chance. That's why I put it on this list. I'm not going to say anything about it, obviously, because it's a sequel, but if you read The Foxglove King and you really enjoyed it, just know that the sequel to that is coming out on the 9th in April. Another one that is tentatively on my TBR is The House on Biscayne Bay by Chanel Clayton. She wrote the series of historical fictions that feature Cuba heavily, and I remember reading the first one and not being super impressed with it. And so since that time, I haven't really continued with her as an author, but the premise of this one actually sounded intriguing to me. It says, with the Great War finally behind them, many Americans flocked to South Florida with their sights set on making a fortune. When wealthy industrialist Robert Barnes and his wife, Anna, build Marbrisa, a glamorous estate on Biscayne Bay, they become the toast of the newly burgeoning society. Anna and Robert appear to have it all, but in a town like Miami, appearances can be deceiving and one scandal can change everything. Years later, following the tragic death of her parents in Havana, Carmen Acosta journeys to Marbrisa, the grand home of her estranged older sister, Carolina, and her husband, Asher Wyatt. On the surface, the gilded estate looks like paradise, but Carmen quickly learns that nothing at Marbrisa is as it seems. The house has a treacherous legacy and Carmen's own life is soon in jeopardy, unless she can unravel the secrets buried beneath the mansion's facade and stop history from repeating itself. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a combination of historical fiction and mystery slash thriller, and I'm actually really intrigued by that. So that is why I put it on this list, and that is why it is tentatively on my TBR for April. Another one that I haven't quite decided on whether or not I'm going to pick up, but I definitely feel like I need to mention it here, is the newest release by Lee Bardugo, also coming out on the 9th, called The Familiar. This sounds very different from anything that she's written before, and I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. I have read many books by Lee Bardugo in the past, and I do really enjoy her, but this one, it says it's a historical fantasy set during the Spanish Golden Age. It says, in a shabby house on a shabby street in the new capital of Madrid, Lucia Cotado uses scraps of magic to get through her days of endless toil as a scullion. But when her scheming mistress discovers the lump of a servant cowering in the kitchen is actually hiding a talent for little miracles, she demands Lucia uses those gifts to better the family's social position. What begins as simple amusement for the bored nobility takes a perilous turn when Lucia garners the notice of Antonio Perez, the disgraced secretary to Spain's king. Still reeling from the defeat of his armada, the king is desperate for any advantage in the war against England's heretic queen, and Perez will stop at nothing to gain the king's favor. Determined to seize this one chance to better her fortunes, Lucia plunges into a world of seers and alchemists, holy men and hucksters, where the lines between magic, science, and fraud are never certain. But as her notoriety grows, so does the danger that her Jewish blood will doom her to the Inquisition's wrath. She will have to use every bit of her wit and will to survive, even if that means enlisting the help of Guillen Santangel, an embittered and mortal familiar, whose own secrets could prove deadly for them both. So again, I don't really know how I feel about that one. That doesn't really seem like something I would typically pick up, but it is there, it is on my radar, and if you are a fan of Lee Bardugo, it is coming out next year on the 9th of April. All right, then last but certainly not least for April, we have Emily Henry's newest release coming out on the 23rd called Funny Story. I enjoy Emily Henry. I think that she's a very clever writer. She writes a lot of great witty banter. I'm not going to read the full synopsis, but I'm going to read this last line. It says, there's no way Daphne would actually start her new chapter by falling in love with her ex-fiance's new fiance's ex. So it sounds like she recently had a relationship end. That person went on to find a new fiance and that new fiance also had a relationship end. And now the main character is going to fall in love with that person's ex. I don't know if I've actually ever read a book that contains that kind of trope before. So I'm here for it. I'm probably always going to be here for Emily Henry. Like I said, this one comes out on the 23rd of April. All right, moving on into May, starting with the 7th, we have This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. I read Every Summer After earlier this year and I absolutely loved it. It was an easy five stars for me and I think Carly Fortune has the potential to be a new favorite romance author. So I definitely placed this one on my TBR. It says, Lucy is the tourist vacationing at a beach house on Prince Edward Island. Felix is the local who shows her a very good time. The only problem, Lucy doesn't know he's her best friend's younger brother. Lucy and Felix's chemistry is unreal, but the list of reasons why they need to stay away from each other is long and they vow to never repeat that electric night again. It's easier said than done. Each year, Lucy escapes to PEI for a breath of coastal air, fresh oysters, and crisp Vinho Verde with her best friend, Bridget. Every visit begins with a long walk on the beach beneath soaring red cliffs and a golden sun, and every visit, Lucy promises herself she won't wind up in Felix's bed again. If Lucy can't help being drawn to Felix, at least she's always kept her heart out of it. When 
Bridget suddenly flees Toronto a week before her wedding, Lucy drops everything to follow her to the island. Her mission is to help Bridget through her crisis and resist the one man she's never been able to. But Felix's sparkling eyes and flirty quips have been replaced with something new, and Lucy's beginning to wonder just how safe her heart truly is. So I'm down for it. I'm here for it. I love these romances that are set on the lake and that happen like every single summer. I think that's an interesting take. And I don't know if that's how her second book goes as well, but it sounds like our main character is returning to the same place summer after summer and things are just going to progress with a love interest. And I'm certainly here for it. So again, this one comes out on May 7th. Another one that I'm mentioning in this video, not for me, but for y'all, because it's a very popular author duo. It is The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren, their new book coming out on May 14th. Christina Lauren is another author that I've officially given up on as of 2023. I'm no longer going to be picking up their books because for the most part, their books are mediocre, if not worse than that. I think I've really only rated one of their books like four stars and that was it. And I'm just, I'm just not going to read them anymore. But I know that a lot of people really, really enjoy them. This blurb just says, Reigning Romance Queens returns with a delicious new romance between the buttoned up air of a grocery chain and his free spirited artist ex as they fake their relationship in order to receive a massive inheritance. So it sounds like these two people did date, they broke up and now they're fake dating and they probably will get together again. So you have fake dating, second chance romance, all for an inheritance. So if that sounds intriguing to you, if you love Christina Lauren, be on the lookout for this book coming out on the 14th of May. And the last one I'm going to discuss from May comes out on the 21st. It is Ruth Ware's newest release called One Perfect Couple. Another one that I'm highly anticipating because I absolutely love Ruth Ware. I haven't actually got to a release that came out this year, I believe, which I definitely need to do before this one comes out. But this says that it's hearkening to Agatha Christie's classic And Then There Were None, which is definitely something that I feel like Ruth Ware specializes in. I would kind of classify her as a modern day Agatha Christie. I do think that One by One was also very reminiscent of And Then There Were None. So I'm interested on her take in this one. It says, Lila is in a bit of a rut. Her postdoctoral research has fizzled out. She's pretty sure they won't extend her contract and things with her boyfriend, Nico, an aspiring actor, aren't going great. When the opportunity arises for Nico to join the cast of a new reality TV show, The Perfect Couple, she decides to try out with him. A whirlwind audition process later, Lila finds herself whisked off to a tropical paradise with Nico, boating through the Indian Ocean towards Ever After Island, where the two of them will compete against four other couples in order to win a cash prize. But not long after they arrive on the deserted island, things start to go wrong. After the first challenge leaves everyone rattled and angry, an overnight storm takes matters from bad to worse. Cut off from the mainland by miles of ocean, deprived of their phones, and unable to connect the crew that brought them there, the group must band together for survival. As tensions run high and fresh water runs low, Lila finds that this game show is all too real and that the stakes are life or death. Whereas One by One was set in a very wintry setting, this is going to be set in a tropical setting, kind of more reminiscent of I still know what you did last summer. They're going to be on a tropical island, a storm's going to come through, they're going to have no way to contact the mainland or get off and people are going to start to die. The one thing I do have concerns about is it's kind of obvious that there are going to be a lot of characters in this book that you have to keep track of, which I am never a fan of, but I'm going to give Ruth Ware the chance to make it so that it's easy to follow these characters and understand who they are and things like that. So again, another one that I'm super hyped for coming out on May 21st. All right, and then we are in the last month that we are talking about in this video, June. I only have three to talk to about, but they are three pretty big ones. Starting with the 11th, we actually have another new release by Allie Hazelwood called Not In Love. And this is definitely more reminiscent of her past books as it is a contemporary romance. It says, Ruth Siebert might not have it all, but she has enough. A few friends she can always count on, the financial stability she yearned for as a kid, and a successful career as a biotech engineer at Klein, one of the most promising startups in the field of food science. Her world is stable, pleasant, and hard fought until a hostile takeover and its offensively attractive frontman threatens to bring it all crumbling down. L. Kilgore and his business partners want Klein. Eli has his own reasons for pushing this deal through, and he's a man who gets what he wants, with one burning exception, Rue, the woman he can't stop thinking about, the woman who's off limits to him. Torn between loyalty and an undeniable attraction, Rue and Eli throw caution out the lab and the boardroom windows. Their affair is secret, no strings attached, and has a built-in deadline. The day one of their companies will prevail, but the heart is risky business, one that plays for keeps. I can't tell offhand if this is actually part of her Steminist novels. It doesn't sound like it, but it might be. So again, this one comes out on the 11th. Also on the 11th, we have yet another release from Frieda McFadden. It seems like some of these authors are putting multiple books out in 2024. This time the book is The Housemaid is Watching, which is her third book in the Housemaid series. I read The Housemaid a couple of months ago and I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm definitely going to be reading The Housemaid Secret next year, which I already mentioned. And so this will definitely be next. I'm not going to read the synopsis, obviously, because it is the third book. And I wish that I had read it myself because it seems to give a lot away in terms of what happens to the main character either in book two or between books two and three. So I'm kind of disappointed that I know a little bit about that. So I'm absolutely not going to be reading that here. But I'm very, very excited to dig into The Housemaid's Secret and then The Housemaid is Watching. I really love Millie. I want to see what adventures she gets into. So this is another highly anticipated one for me for 2024. All right. And then I saved potentially the best for last. It, of course, is Riley Sager's newest release coming out on June 18th called Middle of the Night. The worst thing to ever happen on Hemlock Circle occurred in Ethan 
Ethan Marsh's backyard. One July night, 10-year-old Ethan and his best friend and neighbor Billy fell asleep in a tent set up on a manicured lawn in a quiet, quaint New Jersey cul-de-sac. In the morning, Ethan woke up alone. During the night, someone had sliced the tent open with a knife and taken Billy. He was never seen again. 30 years later, Ethan has reluctantly returned to his childhood home. We love a good reluctant return home. Plagued by bad dreams and insomnia, he begins to notice strange things happening in the middle of the night. Someone seems to be roaming the cul-de-sac at odd hours and signs of Billy's presence keep appearing in Ethan's backyard. Is someone playing a cruel prank or is Billy long thought to be dead somehow returned to Hemlock Circle? The mysterious occurrences prompt Ethan to investigate what really happened that night. Quest that reunites him with former friends and neighbors and leads him into the woods that surrounded Hemlock Circle. Woods where Billy claimed monsters roamed and where a mysterious institute does clandestine research on a crumbling estate. The closer Ethan gets to the truth, the more he realizes that no place, be it quiet forest or suburban street, is completely safe and that the past has a way of haunting the present. Y'all know that I'm here for it. Riley Sager is an absolute autobuy and even though his books are hit or miss, when they hit, they hit really, really hard. I am hyped to know that he has another new release coming out in 2024 and I will absolutely be picking it up. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are some of the releases that I am anticipating in 2024. Please feel free to comment down below and let me know some of your most anticipated releases for 2024 to let other people know some of the other options that are coming out. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me a vampire emoji in honor of The Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I always love seeing your comments below. It definitely helps me and my channel so, so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in Bookmas, meaning from December 1st through December 25th, you should see one video upload from me a day, hopefully leading up until Christmas. So if you are interested in seeing what content I have in store, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And y'all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any of the books that I discussed in this video. So there will be a lot of links going up for this video. But until next time, y'all, bye.